Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash malicious compliance, where people follow exact orders to spite someone. And in today's episode, horrible Karen bosses are getting taught lessons again, guys. And OP tells a story about the time a new Karen boss comes in thinking she owns the place and targets OP and it backfires so hard. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So here's some backstory, which is kind of graphic. Around June of 2022, I start getting this weird pain in my lower back. It was the upper butt area, kind of right where the seam of your cheeks are. Now, I thought it was because I tend to slouch in my gaming chair and I sit on my tailbone. I shouldn't, but bad posture, I know. Anyways, I thought it was sore from that. So I fixed my posture a bit, thinking if I eased off of it, it would get better, but the pain kept getting worse. Fast forward a few months and it never stopped. It turned from pain to itchy to pain to nothing at all at some points. I of course thought it was odd how it didn't go away or get better after a few months, so I schedule a doctor's appointment to have them take a look. I then find out that it's a cyst. Actually, not just one, but there's five. There was one big one and four smaller ones, and with cysts, the only way to get rid of them is surgically. Throughout this time, I had to take a few days off work for doctor's appointments here and there. Basically, I told my boss it's a routine appointment, as I didn't want to scare them with the, hey, I might be off work for X amount of weeks just yet. When I got the news that I needed surgery, that's when I told him. Now, I do a labor-intensive job in a factory, a lot of moving, lifting, etc. And I'm rather essential in my job. I know how to do everything there, and it'll suck losing me for two weeks. But here's the dumb part. For whatever reason, my boss doesn't believe I have anything wrong with me. And he thinks I'm trying to get out of work, faking a surgery. Because, yeah, who doesn't love two weeks of unpaid vacation time? I get home that day only to get a text from my boss, once again giving me a hard time about my two weeks off. So I thought, cue the malicious compliance. I then take all my clothes off and then put my phone on the bathroom counter on a timer. I then turn around, bend over, and camera click sound. You can probably see where this is going. I then upload the picture to my computer and I print it off, in black and white of course because it looks horrendous in full color, and then place it into a manila folder. Keep in mind, you can't see much below where I wanted him to see. I just zoomed into the problem area because I'm not trying to get fired for anything. I cropped around where I needed to. The next day, I come waltzing in and my boss once again says something along the lines of, look at this lazy slacker. Are you ready for your vacation? That's when I hand him the folder, which has the letter of recommendation from my doctor for surgery, my surgery date, and at the very back, the picture I took. In all of its glory, my hairy white butt. My boss did avoid me for a while after I showed him the picture. However, since the surgery, which went very well I might add, he's actually not said a word about it, and he's treating me great. Not even a sorry for giving you a hard time, hey? Sorry for assuming you're taking a two-week unpaid vacation when you were going in for a real surgery. Like, honestly, I, I, like, I don't understand why some bosses distrust their employees and treat them like garbage when it comes to time off. Like, yeah, there are people that lie, but in this case... When OP clearly says they're booked in for surgery, you know, maybe the boss should have backed off. Like, there is a difference between calling off 30 minutes before your shift and giving advanced notice. And this person shares their story that says, I had a boss one time who was such a control freak that she demanded to know specifically why I was calling out sick. And for reference, I'm typically the guy who never gets sick, so it wasn't an attendance issue. I told her I think I had food poisoning, which turned out to be true, and she kept pressing me to explain what my symptoms were and why I couldn't make it in, all via text. I finally had enough, and I was like, look, I'm not physically capable of working today, and you're not allowed to ask me personal questions about illness and medical history. She then said that she would hit me up with a write-up if I couldn't specifically explain and prove why I couldn't make it to work. Now this was where I was going to maliciously comply. I was about to send her something horrific, something she couldn't unsee and she wouldn't be able to do anything about it since she technically asked for it. 
So being that I was basically living in the bathroom and had aggressive diarrhea every 15 minutes and the worst abdominal pain I've ever experienced, I just lost it. I took a pretty disturbing picture of me painting the bowl brown right before I flushed, and I sent it to her, along with the message that says, this is happening every 15 to 30 minutes. I haven't been able to leave the bathroom for the last 6 hours, and here's your proof. Check the timestamp. I'll let you know as soon as I can if I'll be in tomorrow. So after three days off, I show up for my shift, sleep deprived, and sore from sleeping in my bathtub or on the floor for two and a half days. And my boss was not having any of it. She immediately escorts me into her office where our regional HR reps are waiting for me, and we all sit down. The guy has paperwork in front of him, and he's discussing this incident with me. He then gets me to acknowledge what I did, and that sending unprovoked and offensive content to coworkers constitutes harassment and blah 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 right before the guy asked me to sign a final write-up. Before signing, I asked him, did she tell you why I sent this? At that, he was dumbfounded, and he said, this isn't really excusable, and basically handed me a screenshot printout of the text messages where this woman deleted everything in the exchange, except for me saying, I'm sorry, but I need to take a sick day today, followed by the picture. Seeing that, I laughed, because she deleted the messages on her phone, but I still had the full conversation on my phone. I then hand him my phone, and I said, here's the full exchange. At that, he asked me to leave, and to give them a few minutes. About 10 minutes later, he calls me in, by myself, and explained what I already knew, that she was the harasser, and that she had aggressively violated privacy laws, and she would be dealt with, and to call him if anything like this ever happens again. I found out from one of the assistant managers that she ends up getting a final written notice and she was super close to being fired. It prevented her from getting a big promotion that she was next in line for. So if you ever come across a boss who wants to play doctor and question your sick leave, just send them pictures of your diarrhea and they'll either shut up or give you lawsuit material. Oh man was that ever sleazy, and in my opinion that boss should have been fired on the spot like violating privacy laws and lying to HR to get an employee in trouble. She's lucky all she lost was a shot at the promotion. And OP's freaking lucky as well, like did I read that right guys? OP handed HR their unlocked phone so they could look through the messages. Like if HR was buddy buddy with that Karen boss, they could have deleted all the messages from that unlocked phone and then thrown OP under the bus. But with that said, I'm glad it didn't happen. Okay, so I remembered this particular scenario, and I wanted to bring it up here. It's also a long one, so grab your popcorn and drinks. Here we go. So one of the first IT jobs I worked for was the corporate headquarters of a Midwestern sandwich chain. My brother's best friend was the IT manager of this place, and he was given full reign to hire anyone he wanted. We had previously worked together in another place, and he really liked my work ethic, so he ends up asking if I would take the job. Of course, I said yes, since I genuinely enjoyed working alongside this friend and I thought it would be cool to report to him. Anyways, a few months go by and everything's going well. I had met and enjoyed mostly everyone in the IT department. And then one day, the CEO congratulates and welcomes a new CTO, a chief technology officer. Now, this confused me as I thought my friend's boss was the CTO, but then I was told he was actually an interim CTO the whole time. So being green and naive, I decide to take it upon myself to meet the CTO, the Karen of the story. The conversation more or less goes like this. I basically go up to her and say, Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm one of the help desk technicians here and it's such a pleasure to meet you and I look forward to working with you. I then stick my hand out to shake hands. Well, the CTO stares blankly at my hand and then back at me. I just go on and say, uh, yeah, so if you need anything or have questions, I'll do my best to help. The CTO drops her blank stare, and she says, So, just because I'm a woman, I need help? You're assuming I need help? And what exactly can a help desk help me with? I'm the CTO. Don't offer help to me unless I ask for it. Got it? My friend saw this and was honestly shocked, and to this day, that entire exchange still haunts me. In any case, I moved on, and I ensured to try to stay out of the CTO's way. I decided that I just wanted to do my job and work with my friend. The entire time I worked there, my friend had kept me in the loop with all of his projects, and his work. 
so I could hopefully be successful in the field. And then, one day, when I get to the office, I'm informed that my friend was fired by the CTO since he wasn't meeting expectations, despite all the reports showing that his leadership and changes did in fact yield very high ratings for ticket closures and customer satisfaction. The same day, the CTO comes up to the help desk room and she walks up to me. She then says, hey, you worked alongside that manager, right? Well, I'm making you the interim manager since you know most of everything he was working on. Now, I felt like this was two slaps to the face. One being that she didn't refer to me by my name, and the other that she gives me my friend's job the same day he was fired. A few weeks go by, and I just experience going to meeting after meeting. I keep getting told that performance ratings and customer satisfaction is dropping. In particular, the biggest gripe that was reported was that work orders were not getting any updates for days on end, and that the requesters were beginning to feel that we're ignoring their issues. I tried to reply with a plan that I had to help alleviate this, but the CTO Karen says we'll make sure this is fixed, and she wouldn't let me speak. After all those meetings, the CTO sets up a meeting with myself, the director of infrastructure, who we'll call Matt, and the previous interim CTO, who we'll call Joe. She then says to everyone, okay, so how are we going to fix the problem with the work orders? I begin to tell her, and I say, well, I've got a plan that should help with this. See, what I need to do is canvas the tickets, and then see what... She then interrupts me and says, if I needed a plan, I would have asked for it. I want an answer now. I then go on and say, okay, well, I'm trying to give you the answer, which is a part of this plan. CTO Karen then raises her voice at me, and she says, then it's useless if you can't get to the answer. Any other ideas... At this point, we all stayed fairly silent, and the CTO was more or less rambling to herself. At the end, her response was glorious. She then says to all of us, Okay, so moving forward, no matter what it is, I want every ticket to be updated immediately with anything that's going on with the request as it's being worked on. I say, everything that's going on with the request immediately as it happens, are you sure about that? I feel like that's gonna cause... She then stops me right there, and she says, I know what I said. If I have to repeat myself, consider yourself out of a job. I just went completely silent for a second, and then I said, understood. She then proceeds to send an email, summarizing almost everything that happened in the meeting. She then writes, I had no constructive information to provide. But again, I see her plan there, and that's when it occurred to me, cue the malicious compliance. I go back to the help desk room to announce the immediate change. I tell everyone, hey everyone, I just want to give you a heads up that moving forward, you're to provide every work order with any and all updates possible. That includes anything, from looking at the ticket, to moving a laptop, to typing on it, just anything you do must be related and entered into a ticket. That's when tech number one says, um, you want everything in the tickets? I said, yep, you heard that right, everything. As you work on the tickets, keep those updates coming. Tech number two says, but if we do that, we could potentially trigger the spam filters. Also, it's going to flood the requester's mailboxes. Did you mention this to the CTO? I said, yeah, she didn't care about it though. It's apparently not constructive information. The other four techs stayed silent, until one of them said, a storm's brewing and this is going to be fun. We all laughed, knowing what was going to happen. I went to the email that the CTO sent regarding the summary of our meeting, and I opened it in its own window on my computer. I then continued to do as she asked, and so did the other technicians. It wasn't even an hour after that meeting, and the ticket updates were beginning to get blocked by the spam filters, and we started getting emails from the requesters asking why we were updating the work order so much asking to be removed from future ticket updates, and many demanding to speak to a manager regarding the sudden disturbance. I updated the IT help desk email with an automatic reply that said something along the following. It said, thank you for your message. If this is in regards to your ticket updates, rest assured that we have your best interest in mind. A new policy is in place to provide you with as much transparency to your IT requests as possible. This is in hopes to provide a better customer service experience. Please rest assured that we're aware of the amount of tickets this may produce. 
We hope to provide further support to you and look forward to completing your request shortly. Sincerely, the company IT Help Desk. Now, it wasn't long after this that the CEO comes to the help desk room and demands to know what the hell was going on. I could tell he was ready to fire someone, and that's when I calmly said, Good afternoon, sir. We're simply following the CTO's orders. I then point at my screen to the email with the meeting summary. The CEO just looks at me and growls, Follow me. As we're walking, we passed by Matt's, Joe's, and the CTO's office. Each time, the CEO growls at them, In my office, now. We get to his office, and the conversation goes like this. The CEO says, what the hell is going on? I say, I will reiterate, I'm only following orders. CEO says, and what exactly were these orders? I then reiterate the orders, and I say, here's the email from the CTO regarding this order. The CTO says, sir, I can explain, I was just thinking that... The CEO stops her right there, and he says, and did no one stop to think what issues this would cause? That's when Matt, the director, says, well, Jerry did try to explain the plan to the CTO. And Joe says, if I'm not mistaken, Jerry knows if the servers detect multiple updates coming out like this in a small time window, it triggers a spam blocker. I say, and that's why my plan was to update each ticket only once per day, rather than after every single thing that was done towards the request. That's when CTO Karen says, I asked you to update at the end of the day with everything that happened with the work orders. CEO says, well, according to your summary that I'm looking at right now, you did ask for ticket updates as they occurred, and Jerry's team provided this. Why did you not listen to Jerry's plan of action? She responds, well, sir, I've been working in this field since before 2000. What can someone like Jerry provide me with? CEO says, well, he can provide you with the information to tell you why your idea has just cost the company a ton of money now since our exchange server got overloaded. I say, when I was talking about canvassing, I was trying to say that I wanted to reach out to each location's managers to compile a list of tickets to update in a scheduled manner rather than do them all at once. But since you wouldn't listen to me and you even threatened to fire me, I complied with your plan. At that, Karen says, I can't believe this is happening. Why am I being targeted here? It feels like I'm being targeted. At this point, the CEO asked us all to leave, except for CTO Karen, and he had a word with her on what teamwork means. Several minutes later, the team was able to reboot the exchange servers and remove the IT help desk mailbox from the spam filters. I later provided a mass email update to the organization, apologizing for any inconveniences that were caused and that I would be reaching out to provide planned support. I would soon find out that the CTO was placed on an unpaid leave after further investigations were pending. I end up quitting a few months after that, since after the incident, CTO Karen targeted all of us and she was frequently trying to take her grudge out on Joe, Matt, and me. I did leave reporting the incidents to HR. I did find out later that the CTO was terminated and arrested from embezzlement. What a heck of a post that was, guys, and the CTO totally deserved it for being such an a-hole towards OP and everybody else. And seriously, you have to love the victim mentality, right? Like, why am I being targeted here? I feel like I'm being targeted. Uh, maybe it's because you gave the orders, wouldn't listen to anybody else, and then sent out an email basically saying nobody has any good ideas except you. I just love how OP let her dig her own grave. And guys, there is an update to this where OP talks about the embezzlement, and here it is. Update. So for starters, I promise you this actually happened. There's actually court documents out there regarding the embezzlement issues. I won't link them since I would rather not get this story traced back to me. But just think really hard of a popular United States Midwestern based sandwich shop and then look for embezzlement. You might find your proof. Okay, so for the juicy bits, the embezzlement. When I found out about the embezzlement, I had already jumped ship from the place and I moved on to a much better company. When I left, the company was no longer as friendly as it used to be. It was obvious that it was going down the crapper and it was becoming toxic, completely opposite from the image they try to portray. So one day, I come into work and one of my buddies shoots out of his chair. He walks to my desk, opens the internet browser and types in a certain set of keywords and then hits search. The top item was the public court documents. 
I read through it and I found out everything. So I reached out to Joe to see if he was still there. And sure enough, he left a few months after the scandal. He informed me of what had happened. So it turns out that Matt and one of his employees were taking money from one of the vendors to basically remain one of the company's utility companies across the US. At this time, the CTO was looking to switch to a different provider, but this particular provider did not want to lose the company since they were their biggest contract. So the CTO made a deal with the head of the provider company where they were suddenly accepting unreported funds. Now, this was a special contract with Matt and his employee, and the CTO signed off on it. They worded it very carefully, so it would go under the radar, but the taxes would be charged to the company. What ended up happening is that it made it back to the company, and the finance department ends up catching this. They reported this to the CEO and agreed to bring in an outside auditor, just to avoid any potential conflicts of interest. A week after the audit, some officials arrived at the company and they arrested those three individuals. I'm not sure if they served jail time or something, but they sure as hell walked out of there in handcuffs. Oh, and to answer one final question, for those wondering how the heck the CTO got to her position in the first place, she was friends with the CEO. At my current job, one of my coworkers asked me if I knew this person's name, and I kid you not, I was like, how the heck do you know her? only to later find out that the co-worker worked for CTO Karen, and they hated her. It's such a small world. Just when you thought it was over, right? It wasn't. And guys, why am I not surprised that somebody like CTO Karen would approve a sleazy deal like that? Like, I have no idea how much they got paid, but it definitely wasn't worth it. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash malicious compliance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode, where smug, entitled HOA Karens keep harassing OP, and he teaches them a lesson they won't forget. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.